Sugar Mash Products Anonymous and in today's video we're going to set up a Monport rotary for our fiber laser to engrave a holiday cup. Merry Craftmas! So a huge thanks to Monport for even sending us this rotary. We're really excited to test it out. Yeah, so a rotary for a fiber laser actually adds a whole lot of new things that you can do. Obviously, we can now engrave on cylinders and cups, which is really cool. Given the curvature, you can't do that without a rotary for the most part. So we're gonna go ahead and set up this rotary in Lightburn to use with our fiber laser. And then we're going to engrave an anodized aluminum cup with a nice little holiday feature on it. Okay, so Momport sent us over this rotary to use with the fiber laser. There is no assembly required, and all it really requires is you to plug it in the back of the machine. So the setup isn't that difficult. Really what we'll just need to do is get this centered under the lens, clamp it down with some bolts, and get the settings correct in Lightburn. That's kind of the real chore. So the reason I'm doing this is in our setup, we're gonna to have to figure out how many steps are required in this to go a full 360 degrees. So now I've marked it with some tape so that we know when it's gone 360 degrees. So we're here in Lightburn, and in order to set up our rotary, we're gonna go ahead and click this button here, which is the rotary setup. And if it's not there for you, because your default setting of Lightburn may be different, you can go to Laser Tools, and you can do it right here. And we can go ahead and set up our rotary. So this is a chuck rotary, and we have our set up already, but there's a few things you're gonna to need to do. Obviously, you wanna check which type of rotary you're using. The next thing, you want to enable your rotary, and what that's gonna do is change the Galvo setting to move the chuck in the direction that it should be printing out your design or engraving out your design. So we're going to hit enable rotary. Reverse rotary direction is going to be really dependent on the orientation of how you set up the chuck and how your particular machine is, is wired. For ours, we found that we do actually need to reverse rotary when we have it set up the way that we're going to set it up. So we're going to click on that. Return to starting point, that's fine. So here's where some settings come up. This split setup is it will split up your design by whatever you set this to. So it will rotate the chuck, in this case, 1.524 millimeters, and then the Galvo will get the design put on that, assuming it's a flat surface. And then it will rotate again, and then it will do that again. So ours is set up right here for default, and we'll just leave it like that for now. And then you can do some overlap if necessary. We're gonna leave ours as zero. But this is where some of the settings really matter. The steps per rotation. So the reason we put tape on is because we needed to adjust this setting here. The default value that was in there was, was not correct at all. I think it was defaulted to 3,000 or 5,000, something like that. But after watching some YouTube videos, shout out to Laser Everything. If this is in increments of 6,400, you can get this to work just right. So we found that 25,600 for our particular chuck was the appropriate thing. But if you start at 6,400 and kind of see where you're going and then just multiply it by two until you get it to do a full circle, that typically works. We'll go ahead and test this real quick to make sure that this is the appropriate setting. And to do that, we're gonna hit this test button, but we want to select the right axis that we're gonna have this thing set up. And right now we're gonna set it up with the Y axis. So it's gonna rotate along the Y axis of our design. Now we're gonna go ahead and click test and make sure that our tape line goes all the way around. Okay, so you saw that was it perfectly lined up after it rotated all the way around and then it rotated all the way back and it is lined up again. So that was perfect. So the next important thing is obviously the object that you're going to engrave, you need to get an accurate diameter or circumference of whatever cylinder you're engraving because that will basically dictate how much the rotary will turn for a particular design. So we're going to go ahead and get the calipers out and measure this out. So I'll go ahead and point out right now that this particular cup shape is not ideal. You can see it is very trapezoidal, meaning it flows up, not a perfect cylinder. So that is going to have an effect on the skewing of our design. But more importantly, when it comes to measuring, you know, do I measure this part here or do I measure this part here? Well, it actually matters where the majority of your design will be engraved out. So I kind of want our design to be like right in here. So I'm going to measure this diameter and then kind of hope for the best. 
So I've got 2.925. So that's what I'm gonna enter for my cup diameter. And you can see when you adjust the diameter, it automatically adjusts the circumference. For the motor speed settings, we're gonna leave this pretty much default, with no real reason to change that right now. And we're gonna call that good for now. So the next part of the setup is we need to make sure our laser is aligned with our chuck and what we're gonna be putting in it. So in order to do that, we're just gonna draw a line. And I'm gonna make sure that's perfectly flat and I'm gonna place it in the middle. And now I'm going to basically project this line by doing a frame to see where it lines up on my chuck. I'm gonna raise this up. So I'm just gonna use this dowel so I can line up that line so I can make sure I'm perfectly centered. It came with bolts for this, but the bolts were too big for this machine. So there's probably another machine out there that Montport puts out where the holes are a different diameter than these holes. So I had to find my own bolts that fit this, uh, which is fine. I'm not tightening these down just yet. I'm just getting them started because I want to do some fine adjustments to make sure that line is perfectly sitting on top of that dowel. And once that is, I'm going to tighten these up. So now we're lined up. You can see the line that we have in the middle is perfectly aligned there and it's you know, nice and even. And the rotary is bolted down to the table so we don't have to worry about that moving. We're going to go ahead and put our cup in and adjust the angle here because our cup, remember, is very trapezoidal shape. So it's not going to focus if it's like this. We need to turn the cup up so that it is flat with the lens. All right, so change the plan. We're gonna clamp this from the bottom side where we can actually clamp this in the machine because the cup diameter is too big for even the open jaws here. And again, I could use the other set of clamps that kind of clamp this way, but because this cup is so trapezoidal, my fear is it's just gonna fall off and it's not gonna clamp it very well. So I'm gonna do my best to get this on as straight as I can this direction. So we're just gonna have to push the design over this way as much as possible. So now what I'm gonna do is level this. Important to note here, the level here matters with the machine, the lens. So if you're not on a flat surface to begin with, putting this on here and leveling that out isn't gonna matter unless it's actually leveled with the lens. This is my measuring stick and I just get it to the distance between the cup and the lens. Here's our design, and obviously I needed to rotate it in the right direction. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, and I'm gonna put it on our line as much this way as possible. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this line to tool path. And now when I go to cuts and layers, this will be a fill. I'm just using this color engraved setting. I know it's not gonna be in color. I'm gonna apply this to the layer. Change that to, I think that looks good. Now let's frame this out to see where it's gonna fall in the cup. So that's about as high as we can get it on the cup. Because we do have a pretty small lens, ideally we would have a bigger lens that we could move this over in this direction more, but we are very limited here because we are on the last clamp down hole on the table and obviously there's a big ledge. But what I want to do now is because we're not sure which direction this is going to rotate and if it's going to go backwards, I want to turn the power way down and kind of see the shape of the laser line while it's not outputting the fiber laser to see if it's going to look right. I'm going to turn the power down to like 5%. So that's not even going to shoot the real laser. It's just going to shoot the red laser at it. And this will give me an idea if it is going in the right direction. So I've confirmed it is doing it correctly. Another setting, just to make sure we're checking this because this is important, you want bi-directional fill or at least lines that only go in the same axis as our alignment line. So if you were setting this up on the x-axis, you would want the fill to be going into the vertical direction. But very important, don't put it at a 45, don't put it in the opposite direction. You want the line to go in a line with our alignment direction. So we are good there. I'm gonna close that. I'll turn our power back up and I think we're ready to start.
Lightburn will bring this box up to remind you, but I totally forgot because we adjusted where we're going to put this design on the cup, we're putting it a little bit lower. That is going to change our object diameter. So I went ahead and remeasured, and we are now at 2.75. And again, this is the middle of our design. So now we can go ahead and start. Yeah, we should run that again. There's a few lines in it that didn't get. So what I'll do is I'll speed it up, but I'll change the laser pass. All right, so we got some awesome results. This is exactly what I was looking for. And you can see all the fine details in the text there. And there's really not as much skewing as I would have thought with this being so trapezoidally shaped. But let's get this out of the machine and cleaned up. So we did have to run it through an additional time. And all we did was really just change that setting for how often the chuck sets, because what I think what was happening when we were getting those fine lines up here, it was getting too out of focus because of the curve here. So I just shortened that distance so that the chuck moved more often and it made it so that those fine lines disappeared off of this design. I am so pleased with that result. Really, it wasn't that difficult to set up the chuck at all. I mean, it does take a little bit more time, obviously, than just laying a flat piece down on the laser. There's obviously the settings you gotta make sure it's just right. But if you were doing multiple of these, all you have to do is set up the chuck once and then you just run the different cups in. But this is so cool. I love the shininess of this and the flatness of our engraving there. That's really neat. So would you recommend this rotary if you have this fiber laser? Yes, I would definitely recommend getting a rotary chuck if you've got a fiber laser or really any laser because having the ability to do a round cylinder with a laser is just going to open up so many more different projects that you can do. Now, the only thing that I have to say negative about this is, well, really it's about the cup. Uh, these jaws just don't open up just wide enough uh, for the lip of this cup so that we could orient the way we want. But again, that's really just because of this cup. And we were able to get it work by putting the back end in. And honestly, we could have also put in the other jaws that flip around and go on the inside and move those out to clamp it from the inside. But I was just afraid it was gonna fall out because of how skewed this cup is. But I honestly have no complaints here. This was really easy to do. Look at those cool results we got. That's neat. Just makes me wanna laser engrave every cylinder we have. Tis the season to laser engrave. cool project and I think the results turned out really nice. Yeah, once you get the rotary set up the initial time, we could repeat this a thousand times if we wanted to, but it's really easy to set up as we showed. And then once you get it locked down, you can just get nice refined results just like this pretty easily. So custom cups would be a really cool gift to give to someone if you put like their names or initials or a design that they'd like on them. Absolutely, I agree. And if you wanna go ahead and make some custom cups of your own, Make sure you get your rotary and fiber laser from the Momport website. We'll link it down below. And don't forget to use our discount code Anonymous10 for 10% off. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn those notifications so you're reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.